Along with me on the speaker panel, we have Mr. Anmol Prakash. So Anmol is our VP operations, and he also lead Big Blue Button Solutions delivery. Before I pass it over to the speaker panel, let me give you a quick intro about 3E Software Solutions. So we are a technology company providing e-learning solutions to training, education, and corporate industries. We are uh, specialized in de designing and developing full-fledged e-learning ecosystems. For example, LMS and e-commerce for training businesses, LMS and virtual classroom for academia and training, and LMS and ERP for corporates. So this is just a one-liner kind of intro about us. So Anmol will lead today's webinar, and he will walk you through how you can live stream the tutorial session on social media channels, and what are the benefits of streaming live classroom session on social media. So as the session goes on, you may post your queries over the private chat to say, me or Viresh, and we will take up your queries at the end of the session. So that's it for a quick base of the session. Now, without further delay, we will start the session. Anmol, now it is all over to you. Yeah, thanks, Ashank, for passing over the control. So, hello, everyone. And uh, as Ashank uh, mentioned, so today's session is about uh, how to live stream a big button. And the very first question pops up here is, um, why live stream? Why do we need a live streaming functionality uh, as part of uh, Big Blue Button? So most of us who uh, uh, who are already uh, comfortable with Big Blue Button, they know uh, that there are different limitations with Big Blue Button. Uh, that in in one meeting we have been recommending that uh, even from the community side, you must have seen that uh, the community also recommends that. Uh, you should not go beyond 100 users for one single session. Okay, so so that's where uh, the live streaming comes into picture, and it becomes very uh, beneficial. So if let's say you want to utilize Big Blue Button meetings to conduct webinars, or if you want to do a, a broadcasting of the uh, uh, presentation which you are giving over a, a Big Blue Button meeting. Or you want to support a large, uh, you, so you, if you want to reach out to a larger audience in, in by uh, conducting uh, one presentation or one uh, session itself, then in such cases, your live streaming functionality becomes very handy. And, and uh, um, when it comes to how it can be uh, achieved with respect to uh, Big Blue Button, so there has been. Uh, different ways which have been discussed so one of the uh, uh, solutions which are available right now that basically works on the architecture that uh, a user joins in a headless using a headless browser onto this current meeting suppose if uh, uh, consider the current session itself okay so a uh, dummy user will join as a uh, uh, user here using a headless browser and then it will capture the audio and the video signal of this uh, uh, session and this audio and video signal will be streamed to a CDN so now CDN could be anything it could be your YouTube or uh, uh, Facebook and this streaming happens over the RTMP protocol okay so that's that's about the uh, a base idea which I can uh, provide that how to basically the live streaming will work with Big Blue Button. So now talking about how the overall uh, configurations are done. So this is one of the snapshot uh, which we have taken from the uh, tool which is actually utilized used for uh, um, setting up the uh, setting up the live streaming application or uh, live streaming uh, uh, tool so 
this tool is basically an additional component of uh, big blue button which you will have to you can run it on uh, the same server also at the same time you can run it on a separate server as well so this runs within a docker container and it utilizes an image of uh, big blue button live streaming and uh, there are certain configurations which will be required over here before you actually start live streaming so i was my suggestion here would be that um, before you actually start with your uh, uh, live streaming you keep this uh, configuration ready so that uh, at the when the meeting start so you can you can just start this tool into the container and then the live streaming will uh, uh, start so there are certain bit of manual process uh, i'll also show you uh, i'll try to give you an overview a quick overview also uh, in the live demo ahead okay but uh, for now you can understand that these are the some important configurations as you can see this is the big blue button url of your uh, instance which will be required for you then there will be the secret key which needs to be configured over here and the meeting id which you want to live stream so so the meeting id can be obtained i'll show you how okay so then there is a big blue button stream url so this stream url could be of youtube or it could be of facebook so i'll also show you how this stream url is obtained so going forward, let's first see how do you obtain the meeting ID. So, so if you know, if you have used big blue button and uh, uh, you have seen the APIs of big blue button, uh, you will know that there is an API endpoint called get meetings. Now this API uh, endpoint can be found by going under your uh, big blue button uh, server and there you can just uh, type in your uh, um, you can find your secret key the, the command for secret key and then after that you will find the link for this uh, api uh, manager so this this is basically the interface of the snapshot which we have taken out of the api manager it's uh, it's an api made configuration which is available as part of big blue button uh, big, big blue button uh, details and uh, there you will find a meeting uh, endpoint called get meetings so what it does is it basically finds out the information about all your running meetings so i'll show this also in my live demo uh, i'll be covering that but as of now you can uh, understand that this will be the um, endpoint which can be called on the browser itself which will return you the meeting id of your uh, session which you are running so then going further the next thing which i spoke to you was about obtaining the stream url or uh, the rtmp url so if you are going with youtube then you can go to studio.youtube.com and under studio.youtube.com you will have an option to go live so as you click on go live it will give you the interface like this so on this interface you will see that there is a camera option there is a go live option then there is a manage option over here since if you want since you want to go live using your uh, big blue button uh, meeting so what you need to do is you need to obtain the stream url from here and then the secret key also would be available over here so the combination of both needs to be used to configure your uh, big blue button live streaming component and once everything is configured you can just launch that uh, big blue button streaming uh, uh, docker container mm -hmm. which will start this which will start dumping the uh, meeting interface onto your uh, cdn so in this case it will be youtube if you want to do the same thing with uh, facebook it's a similar thing uh, you, where you can start the live streaming option you can go into the live streaming option in your uh, facebook profile and there you will find again the different options there so you can use your camera over there or you can use a stream key so the stream key will be available something like this um, you can of course set up the uh, live streaming uh, metadata like title and the agenda 
now so that even your facebook users will get to know that okay what is the title what is the event name and uh, title name beforehand it's, uh, the description and the agenda about your uh, live streaming beforehand itself so then there will be uh, options like server url and the stream key and the combination of both can be again utilized to configure your uh, um, your bb button live streaming component so once as i mentioned we have configured both uh, the um, both two of the important information that is the meeting id and the uh, your cdn information then after that you can start the live streaming so what i'll do is i'll show you a quick overview about how it looks and uh, how, how the file actually looks and uh, where all the configuration needs to be done okay so let me start the screen sharing So the very first thing which I'm doing here is uh, I'll be logging onto the server where I have my crew. So here I have already got a sample. Uh, So as you can see here, this is the file. This is how the file looks. Okay, and this is where you will find uh, uh, different information like uh, the secret key, the meeting ID, okay, and the stream URL. So after which, uh, once this information is configured, so we this uh, Docker file can be started up and uh, to obtain as, as i was also mentioning to obtain the information which we have there so what we can do here is uh, you can go to this api mate site okay and here you can configure the server and the secret key and you will find this endpoint get meetings when you click on this uh, get meetings endpoint it will return you the meeting id as you can see this is the meeting id which is currently going on and uh, we have following attendees here as you can see there are uh, attendees over here and uh, this meeting id can be utilized for your uh, for configuring your live streaming configuration so this is about the meeting information about how to uh, obtain the meeting id and now coming to the uh, information which needs to be obtained at the YouTube level. So let me take an example here of YouTube. So if you click on this, so here you will find uh, different information like uh, your stream URL, and then there will be a stream key. As I was mentioning, so this is the same. You can just copy this and paste it into your configuration file. So once these information are obtained, you will have a, a, a link available where you can go and see the live stream. So let me show you how it looks. So this is the link of the live streaming. So this was the live streaming which was done earlier and uh, uh, it was kept here and just keep I've kept this for the example here or uh, for your reference and uh, this is how the live streaming will look like so this is the older uh, I mean this is something which has ended already and uh, this session which has already ended and uh, users will be able to see even the, uh, the even session which was conducted so they are joining recently they will be able to 
series session as well. Yeah. So this was a, a quick demo of uh, basically how the uh, live streaming can be configured in BPO button. So there is, as I have mentioned, there is a, a component which can be additionally installed on your servers and then you can configure it, that configuration file which we just showed to you, the Docker file. So after the Docker file is configured, after that you can launch the Docker container and your uh, live streaming will start. So we can take up any questions. I, I hope uh, we have some questions. Let me to take a look at it. So we have uh, one question here that what is the configuration required to run the live streaming module? So the configuration is uh, actually a minimum configuration should be a 4GB instance, which is good enough for this. Okay, a 4GB instance is good enough. And uh, even if you're uh, live streaming is going on so at that time the ram usage and the cpu usage uh, shoots up so a four core processor should be good enough okay so for your uh, i mean if you don't want the uh, latency in your streaming and uh, you don't want to see lag between uh, the session and uh, the live streaming which is happening so it's better to rec it is recommended to have a Better configuration, but minimum of four GB instance and a um, and a four core processor should be good enough here. So server wise, so we have been using Ubuntu sixteen point zero four itself. Um, we haven't tested it much on the latest version, um, but uh, I will suggest since uh, we have, I can definitely confirm on that that the Ubuntu sixteen point zero four will work for this so is there any application by which we can live stream big blue button session on social media uh, as i mentioned this is uh, uh, one additional component uh, which is part of your big blue button and can be installed uh, independently as a now it's not necessary that you should be installing it under your uh, uh, the blue button server itself because what happens is some some of our customers they ask that they don't want to affect the resources which is allocated for big blue button and instead of that if you i mean if you just want to utilize the resources of a big blue button efficiently our suggestion would be to have a, another server just for this live streaming purpose and then uh, perform the live streaming and uh, the resources which will be required for the live streaming component uh, that will be of course separated uh, from your uh, main big blue button server in that way so social media again as i mentioned that uh, the social media if you want to um, as i showed to you for Facebook, you will have to obtain the stream URL and the uh, stream key, and that needs to be configured at the live streaming component, after which uh, the live streaming can go on the social media as well. So why there is a delay of 10 to 15 seconds in the stream during live streaming from the actual video button session? So as I mentioned, there are multiple factors which can be involved over here. One thing is the resources which you have on your, uh, the resources which you have given to your live streaming module. The second thing is uh, the CDN which you are using. So sometimes it will be dependent upon your, uh, on the performance of the YouTube side and the Facebook side that how they are, um, how fast they are processing it at the same time the information which is being sent from your uh, um, from the server where you have set up this live stream to it depends upon the server's 
bandwidth as well. So because the, that server has to send that signal to over the RTMP protocol to your CDN. So the, if your bandwidth is really good for the server which you are using for live streaming purpose, so the latency can be even reduced. So another question is, do I need to plan the capacity for live streaming the Biblioton session on social media? Um, I think uh, no, uh, though you will require at least a minimum configuration here, but you will not require a, a very big configuration for a live streaming purpose because ultimately it is being dumped to your CDN and uh, it is it is the responsibility of the CDN like Facebook or YouTube to support that kind of traffic on their side because once it becomes a live streaming onto your CDN, it's the, even the users who are going to join and view the live streaming feed they they're not going to put any uh, pressure or they're not going to put any traffic bandwidth on your live streaming servers they, it is going to put uh, pressure on the servers of facebook and youtube directly so i, I don't see that there is a, a very uh, high capacity planning required for this bibliobutton streaming so Another question here is, is BigBlueButton's live streaming free? Um, it is free in a way, uh, but it will have the server infrastructure cost for you because if you want to run it on a separate uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, like I said, uh, to better plan your live streaming, it is always suggested to keep your main core BigBlueButton server separated from the, uh, the live streaming server. So in one way, you will be running the uh, live streaming server and it will be, uh, the cost will be accounted for that. So yes, if you're not going to do live streaming on the daily basis, if you're not planning to do live streaming on a daily basis, there are cloud providers who provide you uh, an option to pay as you go. So it means what you can do there is uh, you can shut down the servers or terminate the servers when you don't need it. Keep an image of those servers and uh, uh, spin up your servers whenever you require to or whenever you need to do the live streaming. So that way you may, it will be a cost effective way. Um, so otherwise the, the component which is available for the live streaming is, uh, uh, is an open source software. Can the live streaming automatically start on the start of the big blue button meeting? Um, as I mentioned, uh, there has to be a bit of manual effort here, which are the manual configurations you'll have to do every time you want to configure your meeting with a, a live streaming feed. Um, but the configurations are pretty much straightforward and uh, it uh, can be done. Uh, uh, it can be done manually, yes, but as of now, it doesn't uh, start automatically. So, do you provide services for setting up Big Blue Button for the universities? Yes, we have the standard services uh, where we set up the um, Big Blue Button for the universities, or be, be it universities or colleges. So, you know, we can you can connect. You can connect us with uh, connect us over. Uh, this email 3b underscore info at the rate three softit.com and uh, you can send us our send send your requirement to us and then we can take it further so depending upon what type of requirement you have so based on which we'll submit a proposal to you and then uh, we can start the work on your approval I think I have covered mostly all the questions here. So, is there any other questions anyone wants to add here? So anyway, if you have any other queries as well, you can always drop drop in a mail at three info at the rate three subject com, and we'll be able to revert back to you. So. I think uh, that's all for today. Uh, Thank you, Anmol, yeah. for answering the questions.
and for the great presentation. So this concludes the webinar. Thank you everyone for attending the webinar. I hope you have enjoyed the session. So we will close the.